improper integrals. An indefinite integral has no limits of integration. It merely asks for the most general function whose derivative is between the integral sign and the differential. These always have a constant term, which is usually written as plus c, unless you want to use some other variable. For example, the integral from of 1 over x squared dx. There's no limits of integration. What do you do? You write it as x to the negative 2. You raise the exponent by 1, divide by it, x to the negative 1 over negative 1, negative 1 over x plus a constant. If you have no limits of integration, you've got that plus a constant. A definite integral has limits of integration a over b, which must be plugged into an antiderivative and subtracted. For example, the integral from 3 to 7 of 1 over x squared. Now, we know that the general function is negative 1 over x. To evaluate this, we take the negative 1 over x, we plug in 7, we plug in 3, and subtract. So it's negative 1 7th minus negative 1 3rd, the double negative on the 1 3rd, 1 3rd minus 1 7th. And if you cross over, 7 minus 3 is 4 21st. 4 21st. That will come up. That is to say, now, the resulting 4 over 21 is the area between the curve y equals 1 over x squared, and the x-axis over the interval of integration. We say that this is integrating from 3 up to 7, closed interval, including the point 3, including the point 7. So on a graph, we say, here is my attempt of graphing 1 over x squared. When you start having 1 over 25, it's really, really small. 1 over, you know, what is it, 40, 81, really, really small. But still, you graph this, and the integral is from 3 to 7. So all the area from 3 up to 7, this skinny little thing has 4 21sts of a unit square of area. Now, the unit squares are weird because this is one here and this is one here. So this gigantic rectangle is actually a square because the, the scales are different for the vertical and horizontal axes. But this little bit is... 421st of that. Anyway, an improper integral is a definite integral for which one or more points in the interval of integration are bad to plug in. Infinity is bad because it is not a real number that can be plugged into a function. Points not in the domain of the function are also bad. For example, the following are all improper integrals. Here we go. Four examples of improper integrals. What's wrong over here? What's wrong over here is infinity isn't a real number. You can't you know, take negative 1 over x and then plug in infinity and plug in 1 and subtract because you can't plug in infinity. Infinity is not a number. Well, what's wrong over here? We don't have an infinity, but <coughs> we can't plug 0 into 1 over x squared. We have a vertical asymptote at that point. So in some sense, there's some infinity going on there as well. We can't plug 0 in. It's not in the domain of the function. That is a bad point. Over here, we have two bad points. That can happen. 0 is bad because it's not the domain. Negative infinity is bad because it's not a real number. Now, sometimes it's very, very deceptive. Negative 3 goes in here just fine. 5 goes in here just fine. This is an improper integral because the interval of integration is everything from negative 3 up to 5, which contains the number 0, which is bad as we said before. So what do we do about this? The way to ev evaluate an improper integral is to replace the bad number with a new variable. T's and S's are incredibly popular in this case. And then have the variable approach the bad value with a limit. For example, we have integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared. What's bad? The infinity. What do we do? We replace the infinity with a T and we take the limit as t goes to infinity. So now we can evaluate this, negative 1 over x. We plug in t, we plug in 1, and then we have some sort of function with t's in it, and the t can go to infinity. If that limit exists, if it, it goes to some real number, then that is the answer. If it goes to infinity, or if the limit doesn't exist, we say the integral diverges. It's, it's not a good integral. Let's say the integral from 0 to 5 of 1 over x squared. Now, what's wrong here is the 0. It's not in the domain. So what do we do? We replace the 0 with a t, and we have t approach 0. Now, in this case, we approach 0 from the right. This little plus here means we approach 0 from the right. Why? Because the interval of integration is from 0 to 5. We are using all the points from 0 to 5. So if you're in the interval from 0 to 5 and you want to approach 0, you approach using the points that you're using 
from the right. If the five was bad, we would approach the five from the left. Let's see. Okay, what do you do when two things are bad? We can't plug in negative infinity and zero is not in the domain. What do we do? We replace both of them. Let's say replace the zero with t and the s with, with the negative infinity with s, and we have t go to zero from the left because our interval of integration goes all the way up to zero, so we can approach it from the left, and we have s go to negative infinity. Finally, what do we do when you have that bad problem in the middle of your integral? First of all, recognize it. A lot of people don't think about domains. You should think about domains. First thing you do is you split it up at the bad point. This integral from zero to negative three up to five is negative three up to zero, plus from zero up to five, and then each of these is an improper integral with a problem at one end. The first one we approach zero from the left, you call it t, replace the zero with t and approach it from the left. Over here you replace zero with some s and you approach s from the right. We're going to do some examples.